Claude Monet, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, just a few of the world's most prolific artists who can capture life and recreate it on a canvas, a gift and skill that eludes most human beings until now. Joining us is Robert Maniscalco, gallery owner and painter and author of The Power of Positive Painting. You go right up with those artists, if I can say so, Rob, because your work is truly stunning. Well, thank you, Layla. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for comparing me to such great people. You know, the work is, the, the method I'm using is right out of what they did. So it's it's got that kind of uh, gravitas because it's connected. And it's so evident because you look at the lighting and the detail, and it, it's like a photograph. And those types of paintings have just always mesmerized me because it's such a skill. It's such a talent. It's just the way your brain works that you can then put that onto a canvas. And I want to get into all this. You know, The Power of Positive Painting, great title for a book, but it's not about painting rainbows to make yourself feel better. Right. Uh, I want to get into the book in a bit, but I want to talk about your your beginnings as an artist and how you discovered this gift that you possess. Well, I was very fortunate. I was born uh, the son of Joseph Maniscalco, who was a very well-known, renowned portrait painter, studied with Frank Riley back in the in the 40s, right after the war. And uh, he learned from the, he learned the Riley method and, and basically taught it to me. Uh, I was interested in painting. I was interested in a lot of things. I was music and acting and all kinds of things. So, uh, but he was able to give me this this gift. He basically told me when I was uh, going to school, I was going to put myself through college. And he said, uh, "I need some extra money." And he said, "I said, Dad, can you teach me everything I need to know about painting portraits so I can make some extra money?" He said, "Yes, but you must do everything I tell you to do." <laughs> like for a 17, 18 year old kid, that was, that was kind of hard. So it's daunting. I did. I just said, okay, tell me. And, you know, when he said, when in the shadow to get more form, go darker. When in the light, go lighter. I was like, yes, sir. I just did it. You know, I, I was motivated by money. <laughs> money is always a good motivator for just about anything. But you know, when, when you look at these paintings, you just know that there's something within the artist's brain, yes. that they see the world in a different way. And I'd imagine that it takes practice. I mean, you ask your father, you know, for some of the tools that he used to be the painter that he was. Yes. But for you, who also clearly had this gift, how did you see the world and how much practice did it take to really kind of get it? It's, you know, you hit it right on the head. It's it's it is a combination between talent, which to me is just the the, the eagerness, the desire, the motivation to see, to look. You know, Leonardo da Vinci, you mentioned, it was famous for looking at things and really paying attention and examining deeply. And this is what you want to be able to do as an artist. You have to have that. That's talent. Know-how and skill can be taught. I mean, I put everything I know into the book because that's, you know, it's concrete. I can teach you, you know, how to segregate values. So that everything is in the shadow here. Everything's in the light. I have a, you know, a scale. I can divide it up, you know, so you can get three-dimensional effects, you know, that feeling of something walking out of the canvas just by following some simple instructions. I mean, and obviously there's talent, but well, there's, there's gotta be a lot of talent, but you, where do you start? So when you look at a blank canvas and right. let's say you're doing a portrait, yes. so you're working off of a, a photograph, I imagine, or is it a live subject? Um, I work from life as much as possible. I, I get bottles, I do demos, public demos all the time for the local art guilds. And, and I try to paint whenever I can. Anybody who's willing to sit still. So at times I pay a model for a particular thing. But I often have to work from photographs because people don't have time to sit sure. for hours on end. But uh, whether I'm looking from a photograph or from life, I'm, I'm looking at some very specific things. And what I do is I start with the gestalt. I start with the whole. I mass in the face and I start dividing it up. And I find where things are located on a grid, basically, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a width to height ratio. And then I can begin to find the darks and lights and and pick up more things. And then I create the illusion of great detail 
I mean, as you look at my work, you say, oh, it's so detailed. You said it looked like a photograph. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it goes deeper than that because I'm trying to say something as simply as possible. Uh, and that's part of the power of positive painting. It's about taking and distilling the essence of whatever form, whether it's a head or an eyeball. And I want to talk more about this and your book. So we're going to do that after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We've been chatting with Robert Maniscalco. He's not just a gallery owner, but he is a fantastic painter and now the author of a book called The Power of Positive Painting. And you've done over a thousand private portraits. You said you learned from some of the best teachers, one of which was your father. And so it sounds like a talent and a, a gift that's passed down through the generations. But you're starting to describe about how you break down an actual portrait. And just to look at some of the portraits behind you, the variation in color and shading and, and light, it, it looks like it's illuminated yes. in some ways. And so you, you've distilled and put all this information into your book. Are you saying that someone who can barely draw a stick figure, such as myself, can paint something somewhat similar to what's hanging behind you? Yeah. Part of the problem with uh, what I call the democratization of art is uh, that, like the Bob Ross, they teach you how to paint a painting. Uh, you know, you just do this, do this, do that, and it looks like a painting. I'm not teaching a technique. This is a method of seeing. So if anybody wants to learn and is willing to practice, and when I say practice, I mean do a, a, a contour drawing of your hand, do it 20 times, 50 times, 100 times, being able to, I've drawn my hand. 10,000 times because I, I, I see the value in that. If you can see the value in the, in the material, and I have laid it out so that it's sort of systematic, and it's based on 40 years of, of experience drawing from my father's teaching and his father's, Frank Riley's teachings. But I've tried to simplify it in such a way that yes, anybody, even you, <laughs> can just pick up a pencil and do some exercises and get some pretty good results. And eventually with practice, yes, you can learn to paint, not like me, but like you. You know, this is a, a system that allows you, uh, allows for you to be the individual, put your imprimatur on a method of seeing. It's really what it is. It's not a painting by numbers kind of a thing. So there is some level of interpretation. And, and that is what makes art so special is the way in which each individual brain interprets what they see and then puts it out there on a piece of paper or a canvas or whatever. Exactly. The word interpret is, is right on. It's, it's how you see these uh, shapes. And you can, we can identify and we can argue, I think the shape is this, this is that. But it's really about just really uh, like giving yourself over to the shapes in front of you. And, you know, like I say, the model is always right. Yeah. Uh, my painting has to change to conform to the model. If I'm painting representationally, which is what this book is about. It's about teaching people how to paint what they see, honest observation. It isn't about, uh, you know, I do get into creativity and there's a couple of chapters on there where, you know, you can actually draw from your imagination sure. uh, because if you can draw from life, you can draw from anything, you know? True. So. That is that is true. And I guess you just have to kind of get into that mindset and allow yourself to explore. Uh, you have to calm the monkey mind, too, I, I would yes. think. It's very, a cathartic experience to be able right. to just sit in quiet and peace or listen to some music and, and to start to draw. Exactly. When you're in the groove, when you're in that, you know, in that space, the right brain, as they call it, uh, you know, the left brain, you turn it off, the chattering one that says, now, nah, you know, what do you think you are? What do you think you are, artist? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, there's that left brain nattering at you all the time. You know, you That's should right. do the laundry. And uh, the right brain is the one that sees. It's, it's like you say, so the left brain has to be trained to say, what's going on? Is this darker or lighter than this? And the right brain says, lighter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's this primitive, childlike, beautiful, precious being the right brain, you know, and we can't, you know, we strangle it with all of our blah, you know. Well, well, you are an excellent authority on, on such a subject, and I highly encourage people to seek out your book. It was the number one book on Amazon for the uh, Kindle ebook, so congratulations on that. 
And for anybody who's interested in either having a portrait done by you, you are a local artist. Yes. So anybody who's interested, where do they find out more information? And do you teach classes? Oh yes, I teach classes. And of course right now I'm teaching mostly uh, you know, privately or I'm teaching sometimes Zoom uh, classes yes. or FaceTime classes, things like that. But yeah, you can reach me at the, the www.maniscalcogallery.com. Fantastic. Anytime. Yeah. Robert, thank you so much. Really appreciate you, your time. Beautiful work. You're so welcome, Layla. Thank you for having me. We're back in two minutes.